Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at processing some landscape photography in Lightroom and we're going to also get a little bit of help from Photoshop. So rather than uh, <laughs> rather than talk about it too much, let's just dive right in and see what we have. So um, I'm actually going to only going to be editing one image today, but I shot it as sort of a panorama. And so we're going to start by merging them. Then we're going to do a little bit of editing in Lightroom, some tweaking in Photoshop and then some more editing in Lightroom. OK, so uh, I shot these on my Fuji X-E4 and I couldn't quite get wide enough with just the lens as it is. And also I couldn't kind of get the frame the way I wanted it. So I ended up shooting these as kind of like a quick panorama, as you can see here. So there's only four shots. But the advantage of this is it will give me a little bit of extra framing room and a little bit of extra resolution. And um, so we're going to start by merging them in Lightroom. You can do this from the library module. You don't need to hop over to the develop module. So select all my images and then go photo merge panorama. So this will give us our preview. And as you can see, don't really need to do anything. And um, that's kind of exactly what we want. And we will hit merge. OK. So here is our finished image and straight away that's pretty good, but we can, we can do a few things to make this look much better. In fact, I might actually make a black and white as well, but first let's, let's do some technical things first. So I'm going to pop over to the develop module and we want to do some kind of basic edits to this first. So if I zoom in, there's a couple of things you'll notice we have some people here, so we're going to want to get rid of them, especially this guy in the hat. Um, it was St. Patrick's Day when I took this, by the way, in case you're wondering, people in Ireland don't generally wander around with Viking Irish hats. OK, so what I want to do is you can see the water is kind of clipping here a bit. I mean, it's not actually showing up as clipping, but it's actually quite a bit too white. So I'm just going to bring down the whites and the highlights a bit. Um, if you didn't know this trick, you can actually do kind of most of your main adjustments by just dragging on the histogram here. So if I want to just exposure, I can do this. And the highlights, I can do this. And whites, I can do this. And of course, the same for shadows and blacks. So that looks better. We can see more detail here now in the waterfall. Um, I'm going to bring up the clarity a bit. I don't want to go too far on this. Um, and in fact, I have to watch because one of the things with Lightroom, when you do too much editing, especially if you're using shadow and highlights on areas where there's kind of a high contrast. So it's usually you see it on where something kind of sticks into the sky. You'll end up with kind of a horrible halo effect. So I'm kind of trying to avoid that. So uh, I'll bring that down a bit. I think it's OK. I don't really see any here. Um, yeah, I think we'll get away with it. So uh, the other thing I'm going to do is bring up the clarity a good bit. Again, I don't want to go too far with this because again, we could, we could end up with a halo effect. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as a mask. So we're going to our add new mask and I'm going to select the sky. And what I want to do is invert this. So what we want is everything but the sky. And then I'm going to add the clarity on this. So I actually have a video on this on my channel and I will um, put a link to it in the description below and I'll put a link up wherever the links go um, and uh, about avoiding halos um, when you're editing in Lightroom. So you might find that useful as well. That's kind of all we need to do to our basic edits. Um, I, can, I kind of want to bring a vignette into this as well, but I'm reluctant to do that until after I've removed the people in Photoshop. OK, so next thing we want to do is remove these people. So I could try doing this with the erase tool. So like so. So we're not going to use that. Um, let me just undo that. So this is the kind of thing that would have been very tricky until recently. Um, but thanks to new features in Photoshop, this is now super easy to do. So I'm going to edit this in Photoshop. So we go edit in and I'm going to open it as a smart object in Photoshop just so we maintain a, a, a non-destructive ability to kind of edit this again later if we need to. But we, we shouldn't need to. You don't really need to do this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> OK, so we're now in Photoshop with our merged panorama. So let me zoom in so we can see what I'm doing. 
and we're just gonna find the people and then we're gonna go with the lasso tool and just kind of draw roughly around them like so and then we do the magic of generative fill don't need to give it instructions and just hit generate okay so as you can see that's a much better job than we got with our attempts to do this in Lightroom on its own um, so we kind of just need to do this now for the rest of the people in the image so if you're not used to using generative fill for erasing stuff um, one trick you kind of need to be aware of is uh, do it in small sections don't try and do it all together because what will happen is um, generative fill is limited in its resolution and if you try and do two big chunks it'll you'll get a mismatch in the resolution and it'll be soft and it won't stand out very well and you don't want to do that um, so just kind of do the smallest areas possible each time um, and it, yeah it'll take a little while but it's still a million times faster than trying to do this with the clone of stamp tool in fact there's no comparison <laughs> let's face this okay so I'm just going to go through the rest of these and I'm going to fast forward here because you don't need to sit through all this okay I think that is everybody so let's just check those corners okay now you could um, flatten this image if you want um, to kind of get rid of all these but I'm just gonna hit save here now when I pop back over to Lightroom we're back here in the develop module and we have the merged version with all the people gone so now we can do our final tweaks to the image okay so what are we going to do with this well <laughs> there's lots of things we could do um, I could try some of my presets on this to see kind of what look we get I mean something like that's actually kind of nice uh, maybe a bit strong so we could kind of tone it back a bit um, so we, that's kind of one option we could go with um, maybe bring the vignette in a bit more and that's like that's pretty good I kind of like that if we zoom in here we've got this nice kind of texture on the rocks we've got the water yeah so that's pretty good but when I was playing around with this earlier you know like any good baking show here's one I made earlier um, I did actually make this in black and white and it actually works quite well so I'm just going to undo this get rid of that preset and I'm just going to hit V on the keyboard to make it black and white and even at that that's pretty good but we want to tweak a few things and make it a bit more dramatic so uh, the first thing we want to do is go to the curves and set this to medium contrast okay and we can bring our clarity up a bit again we want to watch the sky for those halos but that's not too bad again we can tweak our contrast even more okay and we can play around with the actual black and white mix so if I undo the black and white for a second you can see there's lots of greens here there's some kind of browns as well so we can bring some of them up and then the blue of the sky we can kind of bring down okay so if we bring down the blue you can see we're darkening the sky we're also bringing back some of the water you don't want to go too far with this because it'll start to look a bit ridiculous um, but even at that that's pretty good and then there's some oranges here we can kind of pick out some details but again we don't want to go too far with that and then the greens we can kind of add a little bit of contrast with this there's not really anything picking up in the purples <laughs> okay so that's pretty good but because this is kind of everything's in focus here and there's a lot of attention on things so there's a lot of kind of noise or image noise so to speak so what we really want to do is kind of distract away from all that and the easiest way to do that is with the vignette tool so we bring in our vignette like so and increase the feather on it and you can see straight away that looks much better before and after you can see that looks pretty good um we can nearly leave it at that I mean, that's pretty good as it is but this, let's just kind of try a few more things just to see what we do i kind of want to bring up the rocks a bit more and maybe i'm not quite sure what to do with this tree so uh go back over to our mask and we're going to add a brush i'm just going to increase the size of the brush and just paint over the rocks here and we will add some more clarity to this 
maybe a bit of texture as well so that just kind of brings up that kind of wet rock look which is kind of adds a bit of dynamics and a kind of drama to it um and we'll just name this so we remember what it is later if we go to edit this again okay and let's see if we can bring up this waterfall a bit more as well so we'll just add another mask push and again with the clarity on this I'll actually maybe bring down the highlights a bit just to see if we can bring some of that water back in. That's not too bad, but it's getting kind of a little too dim now and we're kind of losing a bit. So maybe just bring the whites back up. Yeah, that's not bad. So if we toggle that mask on and off, we got there and before. So that's not too bad. It may be a little bit too much. So I'm just going to adjust the overall opacity of it till it looks right. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna try cropping this a little because I'm not really happy with the composition. That tree is kind of throwing me a bit. I should probably have gotten rid of the tree. Um, but let me see, if I go with a, like a normal four by six, bring use our guidelines here and bring this back in. So, That's actually not bad. Maybe we'll just tweak this a bit more. That's actually not bad. I'm kind of happy with that. Um, but I'm going to just turn this off and I'm just going to bring this right over to the tree. And I don't mind if it's a little bit wider than a normal uh, 6x4. Because I kind of like the aspect ratio of it. Yeah, that's not bad. So, like, if we look back at where we started, <laughs> it's kind of come a long way. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty good. Um, if you were to print this, so let me just hop over to the print module, and you can see with a border on it, um, so, like, this would be for Instagram, This it looks pretty dramatic, um, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, or something like that either. Also looks kind of nice. So yeah, a nice big print of this now would go well. Um, I don't have a printer here, so I can't make a print, but um, it's certainly something I consider doing ordering one. So, but yeah, so that is how we take a landscape image from start to finish, starting with four separate images, merging them, um, removing the people using generative fill in Photoshop, and then doing some final tweaks and making a nice dramatic black and white in Lightroom. Okay, so I hope you have found this useful or at least somewhat interesting. And if you have, please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you.